Uh, today's uh, talk is, is about carbon markets and, and opportunities for uh, Kentucky woodland owners. Uh, so again, I'm Dr. Uh, Jacob Muller. I'm an assistant professor of hardwood silviculture extension uh, here in the, the department. And so we've heard this word carbon uh, a whole bunch of times lately. It's, it's been a big topic in the forestry world and agri agriculture world and beyond. Uh, and it can be a, a confusing topic for a lot of us uh, as we're thinking about uh, some of its uh, applications uh, and some of the benefits to it. But I think it's important that we uh, step back and uh, kind of answer this question, why is everyone talking about carbon? And it's, it's important to put this into context, right? And so uh, we look at the trajectory of, of carbon emissions into the atmosphere, right? And so we're, we're following this, this gray line on the, on the left figure. Uh, if, if the amount that we emit into the atmosphere doesn't really change, we're kind of continuing to follow this this little orange, orangish red line here, uh, increasing the amount of carbon uh, in the atmosphere. Some of the initiatives uh, that have been proposed, and some of the large corporations that are, they've been, um, they've uh, made uh, initiatives themselves to reduce the amount uh, that they are emitting into uh, into the atmosphere. But uh, when we look at this graph on the left, we we see this trend, right? The the relationship between carbon in the atmosphere and the temperature. Uh, is well studied and, and well supported. And so uh, again, we have these same trajectories where a higher amount of emissions uh, is leading towards a higher uh, overall temperature. And that can have all sorts of, of uh, effects down, down the road um, in different uh, systems uh, from temperature to precipitation to uh, kind of how uh, different large uh, storms uh, that, that we're seeing and, and droughts, how all that kind of plays uh, into this. And so this is really what we're talking about is all these initiatives focused around carbon. Uh, our goal is to reduce the amount of carbon uh, in the atmosphere, right? And so what is being done to, to reduce the amount of that carbon? Uh, there's some big, bold plans out there, right? Some uh, large uh, uh, companies, energy companies such as ExxonMobil are investing uh, billions of dollars into infrastructure to capture and store carbon deep down in these impermeable layers uh, of the earth, right? These are big projects um, and I won't uh, begin to uh, try to act like I, I know all of the ins and outs of, of these large uh, development or these these developments with uh, carbon storage and um, and um, uh, capture right uh, but what I do know a lot about uh, is is trees and forests right and this is something that we're talking a lot about is the relationship between forests and carbon and how we can uh, use forests and forest management in particular to help us, uh, store and capture that carbon. Uh, and then I'll talk about some of the, the opportunities associated with that. But the advantages of, of thinking about forests as this amazing tool for, for storing carbon uh, is forests have been doing this uh, for as long as there's been plants uh, and forests uh, on this earth, right? They've per perfected the, the art of capturing and storing uh, carbon. Uh, there's not any large infrastructure, these big uh, plants that are capturing carbon, right? We can, uh, just through forest management, we can improve the way that uh, carbon is stored and captured uh, in or on the earth, right? In forestry, it's an established science. Uh, foresters and others have been thinking about uh, how we manage forests for long-term sustainability for, for hundreds of years. Right. Uh, and industry uh, is leading uh, a lot of initiatives in, uh, in this particular field of, of forestry, carbon-focused forestry. Right. Uh, it's long-term storage, and there's lots of co-benefits 
uh, with managing for sustainability, right? Uh, obviously, uh, oxygen is, is one of those, uh, but we can also increase a whole uh, suite of different forest resources from uh, increasing biodiversity, recreational opportunities, uh, improving water uh, and, and wildlife habitat. So these are all co-benefits that we can uh, manage for as we're thinking about carbon storage. Okay? Uh, so backing up just a little bit, uh, thinking about how trees actually capture the carbon, right? We, we know, um, or at least a lot of us have heard from uh, our uh, early uh, ecology or science courses of this process called photosynthesis. Right? And this photosynthesis uh, process is when a plant uh, absorbs CO2 uh, from the atmosphere, right? Uh, and then uh, also uptaking water from, from their roots. Uh, and this is uh, combined with, with light and all plants need light, right? And what happens is those carbon dioxide and those, uh, those water molecules uh, join and go through this, this photosynthesis process and, uh, and it produces sugars, right? And then the other byproduct is, is oxygen, right? We know that uh, trees uh, and plants take in carbon dioxide and then they uh, release uh, oxygen. But a byproduct of that is these sugars, right? And you'll see in that chemical um, uh, uh, formula right there, uh, there's uh, six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms. That six carbon atoms is where that carbon goes from the carbon dioxide. It's stored uh, in the trees, right? Not all of it's stored, but a lot of it is, uh, and some of that is released uh, back into uh, the atmosphere uh, as well. Okay. So when we're looking just at trees and how trees store carbon, wood is the number one uh, uh, carbon stock in a tree, right? Uh, we can look at different carbon models. Uh, soil is, is generally the largest uh, component of the forest ecosystem where carbon is stored, uh, but the, the wood in a tree is, is uh, where, if we're just talking about the tree, where a majority of that carbon is stored. And it's stored for long term, right? The age of the tree. The roots uh, are the next uh, largest store of carbon in, in the tree. And then the leaves, right? Leaves are the, the least amount. Only about 1% of carbon uh, is stored in the trees. And in deciduous forests, we know that that's a continual seasonal cycle of growing and, um, and dropping leaves and decomposing, right? Uh, it's, it's also important to think about the stages of development when we're talking about forest carbon. Right? Young forests, they grow rapidly, uh, but there's also a lot of competition and trees grow and die. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, biomass uh, for carbon storage. So small trees uh, have a limited amount of carbon that they can store, but they are good at uh, sequestering, right? They're good at pulling in carbon dioxide uh, out of the atmosphere because there's a lot of rapid growth happening in young forests. Mature forests uh, are kind of the sweet spot where they're, they're continuing to grow and develop but their growth is, is slowed, right? There's less, um, a lot of the trees have become established that are going to be established in the, in the forest at stand. They're the best at sequestering carbon, uh, some mortality, but these large trees are the best um, at, at storing carbon, right? And then we have old growth. Uh, and this isn't to say that old growth isn't important because it is for so many other reasons. Uh, but when we're talking about forests, that have reached uh, their, their peak, and you could say, their culmination age where their growth begins to slow uh, over time, there's not a lot of net growth happening uh, in forests. Uh, they're relatively poor at, at sequestering uh, because of the mortality and the decay, but they're, they're still good at storing forests. And so there's a place for all of these different stages of forest development. Uh, different forest types, uh, not all forests are created equal, at least when we're talking about carbon. Again, rainforests are fast growing and rapidly decaying, and so they're not great uh, at long-term storage. Uh, the same with the boreal forest, kind of on the other end of the spectrum, where they're growing slowly, uh, slower decay, um, and they're also uh, good at, at storing carbon. But these temperate forests, these forests that we find here in Kentucky uh, with moderate growth, 
uh, moderate to slow decay, uh, depending on, on where this forest is located. These are ec excellent uh, forests to store carbon. Right? So quick summary of forest uh, carbon. Uh, trees are great at sequestering and storing carbon. Forests sequester and store carbon in the trees and in the soil. Uh, and when we think about managing for carbon, a lot of that is focused towards young, early successional uh, uh, forests and watching or managing them as they grow into mature forests and managing those. Uh, and then temperate forests are really a key for a successful impact. Okay, so just real quickly, how do we grow carbon? Well, we keep forests as forests. We protect the health of the forest, uh, encourage growth. Uh, so that's managing the forest to enhance uh, the potential growth of that forest in uh, sustainable management. I'll, I'll say this over and over again, that sustainable management is, is so important for a number of reasons. Uh, but going back, keeping forests forests. So building relationships with the forest, interacting with the forest. If you're a woodland owner, getting out, interacting, learning about your forest and getting a management plan uh, set in place. Planning for the long-term, legacy planning, uh, uh, thinking about maintaining the forest, right? Uh, and then financial incentives. And we're gonna get to this here in just a second. It's important to know that not every place is suitable for a tree, right? There's a number of initiatives, uh, plant a billion trees, and, and these are great, uh, but it might be encouraging folks to plant trees where, or at least certain species where they uh, aren't gonna grow well. And so what ends up happening is there's a failure uh, in those plantings and more CO2 is released. And so being aware uh, of, of the types uh, of soil and climate and where those trees are best located is, is ultimately the best um, course of action. Uh, protecting forest health, we talk about this all the time, invasive plants, uh, they limit uh, the, the natural component of the forest, uh, reducing growth, and they can disrupt the, the function of the forest. Keeping an eye for pests that can, um, that can slow down uh, the growth and, and cause mortality in the forest and a whole uh, suite of other uh, threats that we see in our, in our woodlands. And so here's, here's the key, right? Sustainable forest management is carbon-focused management. Right. So keeping forests as forests, sustainable wood products that store carbon, protecting forest health and other sustainable forest uh, harvesting uh, practices. Yeah. So real quickly, uh, touch on uh, some of the opportunities. Right? Carbon markets aren't necessarily new but they haven't been accessible for a wide range of landowners. So most programs are set up uh, for larger land uh, holdings, right? A thousand to 2,500 acres uh, minimum for a lot of these, but there's been a push recently to uh, open up the markets to smaller woodland owners, right? And so there's really two markets that we're seeing enter into, uh, into the area, into Kentucky uh, here in the next uh, year or two, where a lot of these will be uh, realistic. Uh, one of these is a, a company called NCX, or Nat Natural Capital Exchange. Uh, and this is a timber deferment. So they're uh, signing up for one-year contracts to essentially delay the removal of of forest products. And so that uh, ultimately it, they're encouraging more storage uh, on, on the landscape uh, and getting folks to think about forest management, right? Uh, as you can see here, it's primarily been uh, set up in the South, uh, South of Kentucky. So Texas uh, and Louisiana and Alabama are, are kind of the, the big states that have, um, entered into these, these programs so far, but they are expanding. Uh, and you can see here in this map, the enrolled uh, acreage by county. Uh, and a lot of that is, is south, uh, but they're expanding that uh, into, into our area. Okay. The next program is, uh, is called FFCP, the Family Forest Carbon Program. Uh, and this is a program that's supported by the American Forest Foundation, uh, the Nature Conservancy. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of support. And the whole point of this is to allow forest small uh, woodland owners uh, 
to, to gain access to these markets while managing for uh, their forest resources, including timber, right? And so there's a couple of different programs, um, uh, growing mature forests, uh, uh, which is the goal is to maintain forests, uh, and it even allows up to 25% um, uh, harvesting of the initial uh, basal area uh, or density of the forest. And then another program enhancing uh, future forests. Uh, and this is really, uh, providing resources uh, to offset the costs of doing management so that ultimately you're creating a more sustainable forest that's going to capture more, more carbon. And so there's two programs uh, with this. There's a lot of detail with both of these programs, um, and they're, they're making their way uh, towards Kentucky. This program was piloted in uh, Pennsylvania, and so we're learning a whole bunch of information uh, about how the rollout for this program went uh, in, in Pennsylvania. So hopefully we can uh, troubleshoot or um, take the best course of action when we do have uh, access to that, which uh, will be soon. Uh, I'd like to do a little bit of compare and contrast between these two. And I, and I don't expect you to, from this talk today, to. Uh, be able to decide if this is right for you, uh, but hopefully it kind of gets the wheels uh, turning a little bit and uh, start thinking about some of these things. But the family forest um, is practice based. Uh, there are longer contracts, 20 to 30 years, and it's paid over the course of the contract. Uh, minimum acreage is, is 30 acres and allows active management. Right. The NCX, again, that timber deferment or harvest deferment rather, uh, is one year contracts. So you're essentially rent, they're renting your forest for a year to keep that carbon uh, there. Right? And so a lot of these markets are, uh, are set up and they're paid from large companies that uh, are trying to offset their carbon footprint. Right? Uh, there's no minimum acreage for this and it allows others uh, allows for other types of, of management. And this NCX program is all remotely sensed. And so you go to their website and you sign up uh, and then they can essentially do everything from the computer where they can assess your woodland uh, from remotely sensed uh, satellites uh, or satellite data to uh, develop or to uh, determine uh, what sort of opportunities you might have, okay? And there's other programs uh, for those with larger landowners uh, that I've mentioned before uh, that uh, there's a number of resources. Uh, and there's, there's a few other opportunities for smaller uh, woodland owners, those less than 2,000 acres. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll just mention that the two that I mentioned earlier, the FFCP and the NCX are the two primary options for smaller land ownerships that you're going to see. And so some final thoughts, at least that I have uh, related to forest carbon is healthy, sustainably managed forests uh, retain carbon in their biomass, right? And they prevent a lot of the emissions into the atmosphere. So when we promote uh, sustainable management, uh, we're also promoting clean air, water, soil, uh, and that can go a long ways in reducing the amount of atmospheric carbon, right? Uh, and by tapping into these markets, uh, landowners might be able to earn some additional money uh, from their carbon offsets uh, while still managing their forests. And so that's really, uh, I think the most exciting thing is that uh, it can support woodland owners and it can support uh, or perhaps even uh, get people excited about managing their forests, some incentives to get a forest management plan uh, in, your, in your own woodland. Uh, but I'll, I'll end with this. There's still lots of uncertainty. We're learning uh, again from that Pennsylvania pilot study and others and how that will roll out here in Kentucky. And we will uh, stay on top of that and disseminate information as that comes. Uh, if you have more questions about it uh, or they come up, uh, you can contact me at my, my email there, jacob.muller at UKY, and we will we'll be rolling out some additional uh, resources uh, here in the near future.